I've been studying data science now for over four years, three of which I've been working as a professional data scientist at various companies. I started by studying physics at university and I wasn't too sure exactly what I wanted to do after. However, now I have a career that I absolutely love and I can't see myself doing anything else. And so in this video, I want to review my journey year by year, sharing all my experiences, successes and failures that help propel me as a data scientist. Let's get into it. As some of you may know, my original plan was to do physics research full time. So after my master's degree, I'll do a PhD and then hopefully become a researcher at university. But of course, like every plan, it doesn't really happen like that. And during my third year, I did a, like this mini research placement. And this research placement basically told me that physics research wasn't for me. Everything is quite slow. And I thought it'd be like really exciting, like it was back in the 20th century when quantum mechanics and general relativity were all happening. Anyway, about this time, DeepMind released their AlphaGo documentary. And after watching that, I was immediately hooked. I know that I wanted to do something with machine learning and AI, but I didn't know exactly what. I just knew I wanted to work with those cutting edge technologies because it really excited me. So I looked around and then basically, obviously I stumbled across the data science profession, which uses this tech and that was my goal. So in my final year of university, I was hell bent on becoming a data scientist. Most of that year was pretty much me just learning. Luckily, my background in physics meant I pretty much had all the required math skills in linear algebra, calculus and stats. So I could focus directly on machine learning theory. I took two courses. The first one was Andrew Ng's machine learning specialization. And the second course was a subsequent course to that one, which was Andrew Ng's deep learning specialization. These two courses, I always recommend them. I think they're by far the best ones. They're actually recommended to me by some alumni from my university who became a data scientist. So again, those two courses, you can't go wrong with them. They'll teach you the fundamentals of machine learning and also deep learning, things like RNNs and CNNs very, very well. I'm actually quite proud of myself in that scenario because I didn't spend time looking for the best course. I just took a course that was recommended to me and I just ran with it. And that's what I always recommend. Don't spend time or effort looking for a course that I think is perfect for you. Chances are every course is pretty good. So just pick one and start. I also learned some Python and SQL because even though I did a physics degree, the language they taught us in our computing labs was actually Fortran. So for those of you who don't know what Fortran is, this is very old language, but it's still used today because it's really good for like number crunching, which is very useful in like physics simulations. But anyway, I took several courses in Python and SQL. And then after those courses, I built like basic mini projects to really solidify my understanding. However, if I was learning SQL again, I would use LearnSQL.com who are kindly sponsoring this video. LearnSQL.com have over 70 courses on the website in a variety of SQL flavors like MS SQL Server, MySQL, Standard SQL and PostgreSQL. Every course has hands-on exercises solving real-world problems and is entirely web-based so you don't need to worry about any of the additional technical setup. In celebration of Halloween, LearnSQL.com are offering 75% off the All Forever package, saving you $450. The All Forever package gives you access to all the current and any future courses that may be released on the platform for lifetime access. You can even unlock a further $20 savings by completing their 2024 Halloween Monster Hunt course. This will get you to solve SQL challenges for Spooky Twist where you can catch monsters using your queries. This course is only available during the Halloween period, so make sure you check it out if you want that extra discount. This is a limited offer that is only available during the Halloween period. So make sure you check out the link in the description below if you want to get the All Forever plan at an unbeatable price. During all the studying, I was consistently applying to data science roles and I applied to over 300, as some of you may have heard. I mean, not all of them were data science roles, but still a lot of applications. The one I accepted, I got in around July time and I started my first data science job in September 2021 as a graduate. So this first year was just full of learnings and my main takeaway is don't find the perfect course, just find one you like and start going. Don't waste time on this. When you learn something like Python or SQL, learn the course and then immediately implement it because that's how you learn. And doing a volume approach to applications is not a bad thing. So apply for loads of jobs and basically see what sticks. 
At this point in time, I was working as a graduate data scientist in London for an insurance company. This was the first time I actually implemented data science in a real world business setting. And fair to say, I learned quite a lot. Most of the algorithms I build, I use the machine learning libraries of XGBoost and CatBoost. To this day, I think those gradient booster tree algorithms are probably the gold standard when it comes to any tabular dataset problem. During this year, I learned how to build pricing and fraud models and essentially how to drive business value as a data scientist. Building fancy ML models is really cool and really fun, but they're a bit useless if they don't generate any business impact. So your sole focus, and this is what I learned, should be focusing on the business problem at hand, then deciding what tools and tech you should use to solve it. While working full time, I also started a blog on Medium to help document my learnings and also solidify my understanding of all the data science, statistics, and machine learning concepts I was learning along the way. I basically spent that whole year learning statistics to an undergraduate level. I went to my university's course catalog and found the first two years of statistics content and I basically learned everything in those modules to a certain extent. And that's all I did. I learned all about the different probability distributions, Bayesian statistics, maximum likelihood estimation, all like the fundamental, if anything more advanced topics you need to be a good data scientist. It also really helped me that I was working at an insurance company where there was loads of actuaries who are basically applied statistics specialists. So whenever I was stuck on a problem or didn't understand something, I could ask them to explain it to me, which really, really benefited me. So my main takeaways from this year were, it's not really about the tools you use, it's how you frame the problem and how you solve it. Continual learning is probably the only secret there is to becoming a good data scientist. Always focus on business impact and gaining a grounding in statistics is invaluable for your career. After spending a year at the insurance company, I got offered the opportunity to join my current employer. The main reason I switched is that my current employer is more of a tech company. So I'd learn more about the software engineering side and how to deploy my ML algorithms into production. This was the first time that I actually worked in production code. All my previous work was mainly POCs and I wasn't really aware of all these best practices like I just mentioned. Adjusting to writing high quality Python code took some time. I had to learn things like linting, unit testing, CICD, and using things like AWS. Fair to say I learned quite a lot, but this is what usually happens when you switch companies. So if you feel like your skills are plateauing, then maybe it's time for a change. Before joining my current employer, I would say I was quite a generalist when it comes to machine learning. But my new role, I very much specialized in time series forecasting and combinatorial optimization problems. I learned things like ARIMA, ARIMA Max, harmonic regression, metaheuristics, and mathematical optimization. So fair to say, again, I learned quite a lot. Over time and through self-learning, I would definitely say I became quite specialized in these areas and I probably know more than most other data scientists in these domains. It's also shown me that to really advance in your career, you need to have some sort of specialism. It's all good being a generalist and knowing quite a lot, but if there's certain areas that you really know very well, that'll help differentiate you from other candidates. What I recommend is having some T-shaped skills distribution where, like I said, you know a broad range of things, but you know a few areas really, really well. That will serve you invaluably in your career. My main takeaways from this year were learn how to write production code and deploy your algorithms. Have an idea or something that you want to specialize in. Gain some awareness of software engineering principles and best practices. Change companies if you feel like your skills aren't growing. I began this year at the same company, but I was now promoted from a junior to a mid-level data scientist. As I built trust over my time, I have more autonomy and more flexibility on the things that I work on. This is really important because the more people trust you, the more opportunities you will get. If every bit of work you did was delivered on time and to a good standard, then people will start trusting you and you've been seen favorably in the company. This applies at all stages in your career. It doesn't matter where you are on the ladder. Another thing that really helped me get promoted was being visible. I volunteered to present my work at every opportunity and going that extra mile really helped me stand out against my peers. Over the year, I slowly became more of an expert in forecasting and optimization problems. I basically had more challenging tasks to do and I also upskill myself further in my spare time. I started to productionize all my algorithms independently and I learned quite a lot about machine learning engineering and the best practices around it. I think this skill is essential for data scientists because your machine learning model in a Jupyter Notebook 
basically has zero business value. So learning how to deploy your algorithms using MLE skills, software engineering skills are really, really important. And I highly recommend you learn those because once you can deploy your own algorithms, you're very valuable. You can do the research, the model building, and finally the deployment. You can see you own the whole end-to-end -end process and that's so valuable for the company, particularly if your model gives them money or makes a business profitable. So my main takeaways from this past year are be visible if you want to get promoted, develop some machine learning engineering skills, execute every task to a high standard to build trust. If you enjoyed this video and you want more data science advice like this, then make sure you check out my weekly newsletter, Additional Data. I send it every Monday morning and it's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing data scientist. If that sounds interesting, I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check it out.